Hey, Hickok 45 here. Just sitting out in the woods, enjoying nature. Back, back on the lower 40. Actually, pretty far back today. Going to do another vlog. This is vlog six. Uh, we're uh, right at 6,000 subscribers, so that's kind of been the plan. Do a vlog uh, every thousand subscribers. See if I can bore you at those intervals. Okay. Uh, Want to thank you, by the way, again for all the support and the 6,000 subscriptions. So that means a lot of you are relatively new to the channel. I see comments pretty often and I get messages pretty often about people who just stumbled upon the channel and they're going back and looking at the videos. So you're, you're kind of new to me. Maybe if you uh, do check out the vlogs. The vlogs are more intended for subscribers, people that, that, that really do like these videos. They're not just someone who wandered in and you know liked one video and left maybe. Uh, so I, I really do have that in mind when I do a vlog. It's uh, the people who have watched most of the videos or all of the videos and they're willing to put up with my rambling. You know? They kind of know me and forgive me for that uh, I guess but I wanted to thank everybody especially for the support of the 100th vid uh, that video has uh, gotten a lot of support uh, uh, my son did a great job so uh, uh, wanted to give kudos to him uh, the editing was, was pretty good on that and uh, the outtakes video <laughs> as well uh, he loves to get good outtakes on me I know he squirrels them away he's got the camera running when I don't even know it you know he does a lot of that, and uh, he hides those things away for a later date, so i got to watch him. Got to watch him. Uh, believe it or not, even with those outtakes that you saw with me kind of being goofy, uh, making mistakes here and there, most of the videos do uh, work out the first take. You know? uh, now, we're starting to get rain here. I was just sitting out in the woods enjoying nature, and my son showed up with the camera, so I thought we'd do a vlog. Uh, but uh, maybe this will all be one big outtake if it starts to rain a little bit harder. Uh, but generally speaking, again, uh, sometimes at the beginning of a video we can start off a little rough or I need a practice run just because I say something kind of stupid or I start rambling off on some other track, you know. But generally speaking, we just turn the camera on and do them. Uh, speaking of that, I did come out here to enjoy nature and fire a few shots. You know what I almost did? I have a habit of that, don't I? Alright. Good old cold single action, 45. I just feel better with that in my hand. It is this rain. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about, and I guess we'll speed this one up. You'll like this one uh, since it's starting to rain. One was hand loading. I get a lot of questions about hand loading and specific loads sometimes, actually. Well, I don't really give out information on specific loads. That's all in the manuals, and uh, there's too many liability concerns there on that, as you can imagine. Uh, uh, I will tell you a few things, and I do answer questions about hand loading, because you see I do it, uh, and I'll do some more videos on hand loading. The one thing I wanted to point out in this vlog about hand loading is that if you get a load that works, get your bullets seated, proper depth and everything seems to be working right, gun shoots like you like, stick with it. In my many years of shooting, I have known people who are always changing their loads, they're always changing powder, uh, looking for a better powder, a cleaner powder, uh, they're blaming accuracy issues on the powder and bullets, and sometimes it could be that, depending on what you're, what you're shooting. But one thing I've always done is I've gotten a load and just stuck with it. The load I'm using for these 45 Colt, the smokeless loads, I couldn't even tell you what it is. I know the powder, and I forget exactly how many grains it is and how many tenths. I just, it's the same load I've been loading for 20 years, at least. Uh, same with the 45 ACP. People ask me about that. Oh, man. I know it's Winchester 231, and I don't know, five or six grains, I think. I don't know. I'd have to go check. I, I've been loading that since probably 85, that same load. You know? So I get a load that works. I don't change it. You know, I focus more on shooting, enjoying the shooting and working on me, you know, working on my technique, not changing bullets and changing loads. Uh, always shoot heavy bullets for caliber, see? That's one thing I always do, and I stick with the same load. So, nothing magical, no uh, great secrets there, uh, unless that's a secret to you. That might be a secret to good shooting, getting a load that works and sticking with it. So, thought I'd point that out. Speaking of that and accuracy, one of the other points I want to uh, talk about uh, because sometimes I'll chime in and make uh, my feelings known, give my opinion, 
if I'm on a forum, Glock Talk, or the firing line, or somewhere, when there's an accuracy discussion, you know, that's going on. Now, I'm not talking rifle accuracy, generally, but a, uh, a discussion about pistol accuracy, you know, Glock versus m &P or h &K versus Glock, or, uh, you know, what's another, you know, the Springfield versus Glock, or anything, whatever. Those always make me laugh. They, they really do. I know that's, that's just me. That may be my problem. But accuracy in a practical pistol, a defensive pistol, most of the shooting we all do. Uh, the reason we like Glocks and, and shooting these things, uh, shooting steel targets, uh, competition even, unless it's bullseye competition. Uh, for practical shooting, the accuracy, we don't get the accuracy out of these guns just standing and shooting. We just don't. You know? uh, so even talking about whether an MP is more accurate than a Springfield or a Glock is more accurate than an HK is is almost silly to me. You know, so I try to restrain myself, but uh, I, I do chime in on some of those conversations. You know? Bring me any pistol you want, any combat pistol, whatever you want to call it, defensive pistol. Ship it to my house, and uh, and it'll shoot fine. I, I I guarantee you, it'll shoot as well as any of my Glocks. Right? So I don't say Glock's more accurate than any other gun, uh, and I don't know of any other the polymer pistols or even a 1911 probably that's going to be more accurate in my hand or your hand just shooting hard as fast. So I want to make that point. So uh, those are the, the main points I want to make. And a lot of people, they don't have the luxury of going to a range uh, where they can shoot steel. So I understand that. I think a lot of people probably, like I used to back in the early 70s, you load up your guns, you go to, to the shooting range, and you take some paper targets, you stick them on a stand, and you see what kind of group you can shoot, see how well, how accurate they are maybe. And there's a lot of shooting benches there, so you sit down and you shoot on a shooting bench, you know? Now, that's a totally different orientation than I have. And uh, if that's all you're doing, I can see how accuracy becomes kind of an issue. You know, whether this pistol, I can shoot, you know, that tighter of group you know, with this particular pistol or bullet and another one. And it, of course, it's probably not even the pistol. Uh, it's just your grip, the grip on the gun. And it's not the inherent accuracy. So anyway, that's a, a never-ending subject, isn't it? And I've spent too much time on it. But accuracy. Uh, you might have to put guns in a vice or a ransom rest and shoot them to know which one's more accurate. And then what'd you prove? You know? uh, then put them in people's hands and let them shoot, and then it's totally random. You know, one's going to have a better group than another one. Because uh, that person can shoot better than the other person, so uh, we get a little silly with those discussions about accuracy in a uh, in a practical pistol. I think lots of times. So I want to make that point. So if you see me uh, chime in on that, uh, that's that's my feelings on it. And what else was I going to talk about today? Looks like maybe the rain will hold off. And whoa, you know what? This might be where Rip Van Winkle went to sleep and left his gun. Ah. Look what I found. Someone left a perfectly good rifle sitting right here. Let's see if it'll shoot. Well, you know what? We were going to do a little fishing. We got a pool of water there. So uh, this will make fishing a little bit better. Let's see. Yeah, there's a bluegill. I think I see a bass. I think we've cleared out all the fish from that pool, so we're going to go collect them. That usually stuns them, then we take them up and uh, you know cook them in the kitchen. So we're going to go do that now. Again, appreciate all your support, and we'll see you on YouTube uh, hopefully this week. Take care.